I've never done this before. I have a huge butcher assignment ahead of me. A lot of you who've been watching our channel for a long time know that I'm a hobby butcher. I'm not a professional, but for the last decade of homesteading, I have been teaching myself to butcher my own animals and practicing on our homestead. And today I've got a task ahead of me that is bigger than I've ever faced before. I have five lambs that were running around our field last week. We just put out a video about them that I have to process. It's a huge task, but I'm going to get started and you can come along with me, see how we process animals here at our homestead. This is a great one for beginners who are interested in butchering because I really feel that lamb is the best livestock to start on when it comes to learning to butcher. I think it's the easiest one. Now you'll see here, these are just carcasses. Unfortunately, YouTube is not too friendly to the entire process that is involved in taking your own lambs, but we're going to show you a couple quick clips kind of far back here how this all started and then we'll come back into the meat locker. When it's time to kill the sheep, I like to make sure that they're in a smaller confined area that helps control where I have to take the shot and the distance it helps with accuracy. I like to keep the animals all together. As a prey species, they like to be in groups. They get very nervous when they're alone. So while to the person watching it might seem strange to leave the other animals around the one that we're starting to butcher. Uh, for them, they're more comfortable with each other. I wait for the right moment when I get a good clean shot. This takes a lot of patience. I'm using a 22 Magnum. I find the little extra bit of power in the Magnum helps with making sure that the animal drops instantly. After handing my gun off safely to somebody who's helping, I go up to the animal and I will finish bleeding it out after it's been stunned. Whenever you're butchering an animal, one of the rules to remember is the quicker you can have that animal carcass cool down, the better quality the meat's gonna be, less risk you're gonna have of something spoiling. So we make sure to right away get the lambs hung, we gut them, and then we take the hide off right away. And once we have them gut and the hide removed, then the lambs go down into the meat locker where they will chill for a minimum of 24 hours. I always like to allow animals to have at least 24 hours to let rigor mortis pass. This also will help improve the quality of the meat on your table. If you cannot allow for 24 hours, that's okay. You can still process the animal, you can still eat it. But if you have a way to keep the carcass cold, for 24 hours or more, it's always better to wait and let the carcass chill, let rigor mortis pass, and that brings us up to speed where we are today in the meat locker, ready to keep butchering these lambs. And at this point, we're gonna be cutting them up into steaks and roasts and burger and sausage. So now I'm gonna get started on taking these lambs apart. The first thing I'm gonna do is use a combination of hand saw, and I also use my Sawzall to just break these down into primals. Primals are your main parts that build up a carcass of an animal. So the lamb, I usually will break up into four primals. We'll have the hindquarters, we'll have the front shoulder, and then I usually take the loin section and break it in half. So we'll have two different rib section and then the uh, saddle. So we're gonna get started breaking these down and you'll see this is gonna be a big day. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to get it all done today, but we're sure gonna try. This is gorgeous. Right now I'm removing the kidney fat or what most people refer to as the leaf lard. You can see this is a big, uh, just a big clumping of fat that surrounds the kidneys. And this is one of the prized possessions of the homesteader, the home butcher. Uh, you get to take this leaf lard as a homesteader. We do a lot of baking, making pies whether they're savory pies, like a meat pie we can make with some lamb, or an apple pie. You can use this lard, we're removing it right from the inside cavity here, and you render that down and you bake with it. You can see it just kind of pulls free in one big clump, and I'll use my knife to just gently separate it, being careful not to nick the loin underneath, 
we have the tenderloin, and then of course, uh, right there is the tenderloin. That's one of the best pieces of meat on the whole animal. But look at that beautiful leaf lard, that big clump of fat, and it surrounds the kidney. The kidneys are actually right in there. So before you render it, you want to remove any uh, the kidneys, and then there's also a little gland that you'll find as you're pulling this out, you'll stumble across that gland and uh, you want to remove that as well. But this is awesome, awesome, one of the special treats. And in, a, in a past video, we talked about how we try to save and use almost everything from these animals. There's like next to no waste. When you're raising the animals yourself, that means a lot. And uh, this is one of those ways that you can use everything, is saving that leaf lard and using it in some baking. Here's the other side, and again, you can pretty much just separate it with your hand and pull it free in one big piece. Beautiful. And right at the base there, there's a couple glands, so sometimes you'll wind up pulling them into the leaf lard, there's a piece of that gland right there, so you want to remove that. I'll cut that away, and of course I'll remove the kidney before this gets rendered. Learn about all sorts of little gems like that when you raise your own and you try to use everything in the animal. Some equipment over the years that I've learned makes this job really easy. Right now I'm separating the hind quarter from the front quarter and when you do this the front quarter wants to drop to the ground really quick and it's easy to lose it and it falls on the floor and gets all dirty. So one of the things I like to keep on me is a meat hook. This is a trick that a couple different butchers I saw use in the years past um, and I just picked this little tip up. So take your meat hook and what I'm going to do is I'm going to skewer through one of the rib bones so I can hold the whole lower half of the carcass saw with my upper hand and as the lower part falls it's much easier to hold on to your meat hook than it is to hold on to a slippery meaty carcass. So I'll just take this and I'll just poke it through one of those ribs and obviously I want the point sticking away from me so it's down in and it's poking out like this take my meat saw and I'll start cutting through and as soon as it breaks loose I'll be able to hold this whole thing up with my meat hook. I've learned from butchers over the years, the more time you can spend helping a butcher out, watching over a butcher's shoulder, the better you're going to be as a hobby butcher at your homestead. Some of these jobs require the finesse of a handsaw. Other parts of this process, like for example, I'm removing the feet where there's nothing edible. I like to use a sawzall with a meat blade on it. I'll have links below to all the equipment that I show in this video and I talk about. Uh, this just makes short work and saves you energy where you don't need the finesse or to go slow and easy with a handsaw. So when I do use a sawzall, make sure I have my eye protection on. Let's pop this leg off nice and quick. Nice and easy, fast. Saves me the energy of using the hand saw. And uh, you can use it on other parts of the carcass. The only thing is it does 
nails tend to make more bone fragments, bone shards, than the handsaw does, and it can be a little bit messy. So I don't use it all the time, but nice tool to have in the room when you're trying to get things done, you know, reasonably quickly. done in the cold room. That's a room with the uh, cooler running all the time. Now, <laughs> it's wet in here. <laughs> now we're over by the meat saw and this thing speeds up this process so much. It's okay if you don't have a meat saw, you can still do a lot of butchering with a handsaw only. <laughs> Sorry, it's just really wet in here. <laughs> but we're gonna start cutting with the meat saw. Up to this point, uh, this is pretty a one man, pretty much a one man process. But now I've got enough of a head start. My favorite part of this process begins, and that's where I bring in the backup. There's my backup. What do you guys do? So I'm in charge of packaging. After I, so when I get enough steaks in here that we want, I can I'll seal it here and I'll like suck out all the air out when you call that. Yeah, vacuum seal. Vacuum seal all the air. And then, so I'll vacuum seal it, and then I'll label it with this. Ooh, fancy. I'll label it with this. What's fancy about that marker? It's meant to like write on oily surfaces, which is good for butchering because it's so wet. And like when you like touch all the bags, it gets wet. So this is un nice because you can, it's meant to write on oily surfaces. That's a Sharpie Industrial. Let's see here, Sharpie Industrial. Ooh. <laughs> what do you do, bud? So I do all the cutting, where I cut all the the bad bits off the meat. So the trimming? Yeah, the trimming. So like the nasty stuff. I take this nice little tool and I scrape off all of it. Turn it around. I cut. I cut all the fat off too. Well, not all of it, but I get all the stuff that's too big and the stuff that's bad. Basically, I run the saw and I cut all the steaks and roasts. That gets passed into this section where my son does all the trimming, separates burger meat from steaks, and then my daughters take over the packaging and labeling. And uh, the littlest one here, what's your job? What's your job? <laughs> Other than disappearing. <laughs> she delivers it back to the cold room where it chills and then we put it in the fridge. We got a ton to do. Let's get cracking.
I am been on my feet all day. I'm tired of walking around on concrete. I'm all done with the saw. I'm all done with all the major cutting. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to head inside. We're going to do the final bit of packaging inside. There we can work at our counter. I can sit down. The kids can help. Kay can even uh, get involved a little bit if she feels like it. Uh, so we're going to head inside and finish this, this huge day up. It's getting late. It's almost 7 o'clock p.m. But um, awesome day. A lot of meat put in that freezer. So we're really excited about this amazing quality good meat that we'll have to enjoy. We finished the rest of the packaging and trimming of the steaks inside. And later the next day, we'll actually pull out the meat grinder. We'll grind up all these trimmings and turn it into sausage or burger Basically, ground lamb, whatever we want to use it for, we'll have plenty of it. Oh. <laughs> Three days later, the finished product in all of its glory. Just to give you an idea of what that all looks like, let's take a peek. We have some beautiful, just look at the marbling on those steaks. Gorgeous arm steaks. Couple of nice lollipop chops. We got some ribs. We use everything, everything. There's the lamb hearts. Heart, if you've never had it, is one of the most delicious meats you can get. Look at those gorgeous chops. I mean, there is not anything wasted. And this is a chest freezer that is full to the top with all five lambs full chest freezer of lamb that will last us the entire year. If you are thinking to yourself, boy, I would love to be able to do that. You can save so much money butchering yourself. This video wasn't really instructional. However, I have an entire playlist. Click here to start the Homestead Butcher playlist. You will go through lots of our videos which are a lot more instructional. Talk about the gear you need to get started butchering. You're gonna to wanna to check that playlist out. See you in the next video.